So let's understand the different kinds of denial of service attacks. If we look over here, the A number one, one is the SIN attack, the SIN flood. So we send huge amounts of SIN requests, remember that's TCP with the SIN flag raised, to our target with all these bogus IP addresses. The target responds with a SIN ACK to all of the bogus IP addresses and it waits for that, those bogus IP addresses to come back and complete the handshake to send the ACK to finish the setup. But of course, we're long gone. There won't be any responses because the source IP is fake. If we do enough of these, we can consume all of the permitted open or half open connections because most network services are configured to only allow X number of connections. And if you, like, like a web server, might only be allowed to have 1,000 or 2,000 or 5,000 or 500 or 100 connections at any one time, and if you eat them all up, that server has to spend time timing out before it can close the connections and make them available. So if you overwhelm it, you might not necessarily be eating up the bandwidth. Although you could do that with a DDoS attack, you might be eating up the permitted number of half open connections. So that would be the, the attempt with the SYN act, with the SYN flood. So SYN flooding, that is that SYN attack. Um, we're going to uh, use a flaw, and it's not really a flaw, but we're going to take advantage of the fact that there are limits in the configuration of um, how many connections are permitted, how many three-way handshakes are permitted. So um, usually a host is going to leave the connection open for oh, like over a minute before it gives up on that so-called client. So if we send way too many there, we can fill up the queue and uh, basically disallow it from uh, allowing any other connections, legitimate connections to be made. You could also just flat out suck up all the bandwidth. I mean, this has to be a DDoS. You can't just do it with one or 10 or even 100 machines. You need thousands of machines to, over, uh, to overwhelm, basically, the network with just a huge flood of traffic. Um, and so you're going to need to have a, a botnet army to do that. Um, so in a DDoS attack, we would consume up all the bandwidth, leaving none for legitimate use. Here are different DOS attack types, denial of service. There's the ping of death. The ping of death is not because we're pinging too much. It's because we're sending ICMP echo requests that are too big. And we're usually sending it in fragments. And when the other end tries to put the fragments together, uh, they reassemble to be oversized, causing the target to crash or freeze or reboot. We could also, um, you know, with the ping of death, we could send lots of fragments, not just with ICMP, but with UDP and TCP as well. And they'll reassemble just to be too big. Or a very common one with TCP is the, the pieces overlap. They can't be reassembled properly. And uh, so the CPU is just going to go crazy, wasting a lot of time trying to reassemble pieces that could never go back together properly. <clears throat> The earlier versions of Windows and Linux were the most susceptible to this type of TCP fragmentation attack. A Smurf attack is using spoofed ICMP pings, ICMP echo requests. So we send all these echo requests, all these pings, to a whole bunch of unrelated machines, but we spoof the source and they all respond back <clears throat> to the target as if the target sent them. We could just have massive amounts of any kind of packets, TCP, UDP, ICMP, uh, and we could have various flags raised. We could have the SYN flood, or we could have a UDP version of the SYN flood. We could have malformed SMB requests, uh, which would cause blue stop screens, blue screens of death on Windows. So if you have a malformed request to an SMB named pipe, typically you have the uh, name of the computer not match the name of the named pipe. We could have something called a slow loris attack. 
But this is bogus web client connections. And we're just going slowly, keeping all of the connections alive and eating up all the connections. And these slow clients are taking their time, which means the web server cannot just shut them down. It's got to wait on them. We could have something called an NTP amplification attack, where we basically send spoofed NTP queries to publicly available time servers out on the internet, and all those time servers will respond back to one target. So we're basically using the time servers as if they're zombies. But instead, the time servers think that this one target is querying for NTP updates. We could have an HTTP flood attack. We could have loads of seemingly leg legitimate HTTP GET or POST requests that use up all the time. We don't need to spoof or malform anything. We just eat up a whole bunch of resources. We could have a DNS flood attack where we are consuming all the CPU or memory or whatever of a DNS server with a flood of bogus DNS queries. Or just like the NTP amplification attack, we could have a DNS amplification attack. Um, we send loads of DNS queries to public DNS servers, but we spoof the source so they all respond back to some poor target. Here's just an example of a Smurf attack right here. The attacker sends loads and loads of pings to loads and loads of servers on the internet, but they're not responding to the attacker. They think it came from the victim, so they all respond to the victim at once and just basically burn that thing down to the ground. So those are some common types of denial of service attacks.